Welcome to Primordial Path. My name is Casey and I'm your guide on this podcast, which is dedicated to exploring ancient meditation and healing practices. We'll examine them through an accessible modern lens and discover how they can profoundly impact your life, your body, your mind, your soul, your energy. So stay tuned. Here we go. Happy New Year, everybody. Well, more like Happy May 2023. Now, I know it's been a red hot minute since I was last on here, but it's been quite a busy time energetically. I'm not sure if you've been feeling it, uh, but I'm ready and rearing to get back on track. So not only am I recommitting to a weekly podcast release, but I'll also be releasing a weekly Monday meditation on Mondays. So stay tuned on the week and access that. I haven't decided on the platform yet. It will be a free meditation each week, a full length one. Um, And I'll also be moving away from a website platform and moving completely to an email subscriber list. There'll be a link to sign up for that in the description of the next episode, which should be next week. Um, And on this new subscriber list, you'll receive regular email from me with more information, as well as direct access to the meditations and any other downloads that may become available or courses and the like. Um, In the meantime, you can still subscribe via the website and it will carry over onto the new subscriber list when it's active. The website is still active. It's www.primordialpath.co. And today we will be looking at the five elements. This is a really interesting topic and it's fascinating, really. It goes back so far. So the five elements are traditionally known as pancha tatwas and are more commonly known as ether, air, fire, water and earth. And in the tantric tradition, we believe that all matter is made up of a mixture of these five elements. So the five tattvas are traditionally called akasha, which is ether, vayu, which is air, agni, which is fire, and apas, water, and prithvi, which is earth. So for our purpose today, we won't think of these tattvas as physical or chemical elements. Uh, We'll think of them more as the esoteric meanings. So the earth we see around us is not prithvi. The water we drink is not tapas, the fire in our fireplace is not agni, the air we breathe is not vayu, and so on. Instead, these should be seen as a result of light and sound waves that come from different kinds of energy or pranic vibrations. Astrology has shown us that the first four of these elements have a big effect on our personalities. And astrology talks about the mind, emotions, fate. However, it doesn't talk about the ether. Now, ether is the most subtle and important part of a spiritual experience. However, from a tantric perspective, it's made clear that we're made up of these five tattvas and are always affected by them. Now, if we look at that from the tantric text perspective, the tattvas can be utilized not only to predict the future, but to also control the results of our actions throughout the day. So these five elements or tattvas are connected to each other in a way that each one is based on the one before it. So akasha, which is undifferentiated matter containing an infinite amount of potential energy, is the first tattva to form, ether. So in its subtle state, akasha is both energy and matter, which lay dormant in the center of consciousness. Whoa. Now, as the energy in the akasha particles start to vibrate... Movement is made, and Vayu Tattva appears as air. So the particles of Vayu have the most freedom to move. So Vayu Tattva is seen as a motion that affects everything. When there's too much energy movement in Vayu, heat is made. So the heat is what makes the next Tattva, Agni, fire, appear. So the flow of energy is less in Agni Tattva than in Vayu. This slowing down lets the Agni Tattva radiate some of its heat into the Apas, or water Tattva, which cools it down. Now with the birth of Apas Tattva, Vayu Tattva's complete freedom of movement and Agni Tattva's partial freedom of movement are lost. And these particles are now confined to a certain space and can only move within a small radius. So the last tattva, prithvi, comes from a further decrease in energy vibration, which causes apas to solidify into prithvi. 
So even the limited freedom to move around each apas is taken away from here. Each particle of prithvi has its own place and any vibration is limited to the space it takes up. So remembering prithvi is earth. So then where does matter come in? Matter is made by changing and putting together all of the tattva. So it's a combination of all five. And all of them should be seen as an extension of pure consciousness, not as separate things that exist on their own. It's a blending and merging of the five tattvas. It's important to remember that during evolution, subtle states lead to grosser states. And each grosser state is caused by the element that came before it. So the cause is a very important part of the result. It can be seen that the qualities that are said to belong to the tattvas are mixed together. Each tattva has a main trait, but it also has some of the traits of the tattva from which it came from. So ether has the property of sound, while air has both the property of sound and the property of touch. But touch is more important. Agni is more about shape, but there is also hints of sound and touch within that fire. So apas is mostly about taste, but it also has the sound, touch and shape even though smell is the most important sense in Prithvi. Sound, touch, shape, and taste are also there. So since Prithvi has a wide variety of senses, it's easy to see that it's the grossest tattva to perceive, while ether can only be felt in the most subtlest form. So if you think about that, earth has all of the qualities, and ether has the least amount. Now if we think of this from a different perspective, in your mother's womb, these five tattvas, which make up all of the matter within your body, were in their most basic form in that womb space. Their dirtiness needs to be cleaned up, just like crude oil needs to be cleaned up to become petrol, which then leads us to energetic practices called the Tattva Shuddhi, which is like a cleansing practice that cleanses all of the elements together. The goal of Tattva Shuddhi is to make this refinement possible so that the coarseness of the Tattvas becomes the experience of the finer Tattvas. Under a microscope, scientists can see even the smallest forms of life. So in Tattva Shuddhi, the aspirant is led to a world where matter is seen not in its dense form, but as consciousness. At death, the Tattvas that make up the body and mind go back to where they came from. Thus, Akasha returns to Akasha, Vayu to Vayu, Agni to Agni, Apas to Apas, Prithvi to Prithvi wedding to be made into other things. So just like that saying, we come from the dirt, we return to the dirt. So when analyzing the tattvas, it's important to note that these tattvas only do their jobs when told by the principle of intelligence, which is another name for consciousness. Without consciousness, these tattvas don't move and aren't doing anything. So without consciousness, the elements simply don't exist.